Hi all, we are having a bit of trouble figuring out which base changes are responsible for which amino acid changes and it is hard to ask and answer questions about this via email. So let's do the first amino acid difference together. Here is our taster and non-taster amino acid alignment. We can see that the first amino acid difference is at position 49. In the ancestral sequence, the taster allele, we have a proline and in the derived or non-taster sequence we have an alanine. We know that an amino acid change requires that the codon specifying the amino acid is changed. But if we look at the amino acid table, there are four codons for proline and four codons for alanine. So while we may be able to work out what the DNA change must have been, it is easier to go back to the nucleotide sequence to figure it out. Here is our nucleotide alignments. We trim these sequences so that only coding sequence is included. So we know that the first three bases will give us the first codon, which is of course methionine. Methionine is only encoded by ATG, or in the messenger RNA, AUG. The first amino acid difference is at position 49. We can calculate that this amino acid position is encoded by DNA positions 145, 146, and 147. I did this by figuring out that there were 144 bases in the first 48 codons, Therefore, amino acid codon 49 starts at base position 145. On my multiple sequence alignment, I can count to base 145, or if I had this in an APE program or some other sequence analysis tool, I would use a tool to find this position. Oh look, our base difference is actually at base 145. So I already know that the base change that gave us an alanine instead of a proline was the change from a C to a G. If I wanted to know the whole codon, I can see that I have a CGA instead of a CCA. In fact, if we look at the codon usage table, changing the first position in this codon is the only way we can get a different amino acid from proline. For question two, you can use a similar strategy to work out the amino acid nucleotide differences at all the positions that vary between the two alleles. Here is one way to do this. Make a table and in the first column write out the different possible alleles using the three amino acid shorthand that is used in the literature, for example PAB. Keep in mind that these three amino acids are not contiguous in the protein sequence. In the next column, identify the variant nucleotides that led to the variant amino acids. Or if you prefer, you could write out the three variant codons that give rise to the amino acids. For question 5, you will draw how this information looks in the DNA messenger RNA and protein of someone who is heterozygous for PAV and AVI. I'll get you started with the taster allele haplotype. Let's draw a double-stranded chromosome as we have in the past. Then we will add in the gene location. Let's assume the top strand is the coding strand as this is generally how we draw single genes. We only want to indicate the sequence information that is different between our two alleles. As we have established in the DNA sequence, there is a difference at position 145. So let's label this position. You can work out what is on the template or non-coding strand. Repeat this process for all variant positions. Then diagram and label the corresponding messenger RNA. Make sure it looks different from the DNA. And finally, diagram the primary sequence of the resulting protein. Again, make sure it looks different. Remember to draw big. I actually prefer you draw by hand. Photograph or scan the drawing and then put it into your assignment document. It is tricky working back and forth from amino acids to codons, so I hope that you found this helpful.